talk about collective consciousness. I've been looking over different stuff and I have suddenly I've run into things that kind of mesh with each other and they're from actually different areas of science. And so I just want to share that with you and I think it's kind of awesome and just, I mean, it's all a theory, but here we go. Jung was the first person to talk about the collective consciousness and he was the first person to relate it to it and that's where pretty much all of the you know personality types come from is they come from archetype basically I mean most people know that it's kind of like an iceberg the consciousness up top and then below that you have your subconscious and then you have your id and at the bottom that's where you have the collective consciousness and that's the one that's more debatable what made Jung think that is he noticed that throughout history and throughout different religions there were just different archetypes of human behavior and different relationships that just appeared over and over and over again. Just for example, the assassination and attention archetype uh, that you can kind of basically use with Cain and Abel. Those archetypes appear throughout history and throughout different stories. And he was wondering if there was some kind of common thread. And that's when he started delving into the idea of a collective consciousness. Back to the personality type. Your personality type comes from the archetype that you have. And then it comes up and then it's filtered through the id where it kind of has its own personal experience. And then it's expressed. Jung's whole view on life was you deal with, you know, the stuff that's happened in your past and you deal with your issues. And then from that, you try to connect with the, your archetype, which is who you are and just the whole collective consciousness, which I think is just existence, period. Okay, we're gonna get to the next topic. This guy, Rupert Sheldrake, when he was a director of, of biochemistry and uh, cell biology at Clare College, he got really frustrated because he couldn't find the reason why cells ended up taking on whatever shape they do. He couldn't find out the cause, he couldn't find out the initial programming, and he eventually quit and because he said all of his research was circular and he said he couldn't find any real solution. So he came up with the theory of morphic resonance and morphic resonance state that natural systems such as like termite colonies, um, pigeons, like even like the hormone insulin and just anything, like anything and everything in the universe. And it kind of has a collective memory like of all the light types before it. So basically like if you had a giraffe, that the giraffe would know how to become a giraffe and what to do because all of the giraffes before it and how he came up to that conclusion is because they started noticing there were studies being done with like lab mice and they noticed that the lab mice in this part of the world were actually learning the experiment faster after these lab mice had done it and they just noticed that the experiment kept getting faster and faster. It also applies to actual physics laws of the universe and Rupert Sheldrake says it's kind of silly to call things laws because that gives them kind of human qualities that they have to abide by but he calls them more of habits. You're gonna to fall to the earth because gravity habitually does that. And just the more, like the longer time progresses, the longer that that certain thing is going to be the same. For a long time, they were trying to measure the speed of light and they'd always get the um, speed wrong and it would change, but they said it was just a calculation error. And so in order to fix the equation, they changed the speed of light just to be a constant and it's actually not a number anymore. But it just, they're just showing that the actual speed of light, it changed. And also like with gravity, like they test it in different places all over the earth and it's different in different places. It's interesting too, because people may say like, oh, you know, the physics laws are intact and you can't do anything about it. But what about subatomic particles? They don't apply to any type of law and they kind of do what they want. That's an example right there of where the, like the laws don't apply. The last thing I kind of want to get to, I was listening to Alan Watts the other day. He's really big into talking about how he thinks the universe is one whole entity of creation. I mean, because if you think about it, like we all come from the universe, everything you see is made from the universe. And yeah, we're all part of the universe. We're all part of creation and matter. He kind of thinks of the universe as a being in itself and like we are part of it and we I mean, we're created and we get to observe ourselves. I mean, that's kind of amazing. The universe is us and we are kind of we are each other in a way, like we're all made out of the same thing. And since we do have that connection, we do have that oneness, and it all kind of makes sense just with everything. Because if you do have archetypes in the collective consciousness, it would be from the fact that we all are part of the universe. We all come from the same thing, and we all have the memory. It kind of looks like this. Yeah, this is what it looks like. You have your consciousness up top, and then you have your id and your subconscious, and then you have the collective consciousness, and then you have morphic resonance, and then it's all just all being connected. And this line, like these, like this thing right here, that's a person, and then that's a person, and then that's a person, and they're all connected, like by this field down here. 
So I think that is pretty crazy and I think it's pretty amazing. I'm not doing like one of the whole, you know, collective consciousness things where people, you know, we have a consciousness shift and star child and all that weird mystic stuff. It's just like a pure scientific theory and something I think is really cool and just to connect all those dots. Maybe the universe is more, I guess I'll use Alan Watts. We are the universe and we're just playing a game with ourselves and we have to try to find ourselves. That's kind of what Jung thought you should do throughout life. You you start with your conscious mind and you go through your past problems and then you connect with who you really are. It's your archetype. Yeah. And that's the whole game. It's just to find out who you are. And if the laws of physics were actually the habits of physics, that would change everything and it would change how we understand our universe. So, I mean, it's just a theory, but I think it's really cool. And I think it's something to consider. And I don't think you should write it off just because we don't have the ability to test it right now. It's just a theory. It's not true. I mean, you can't prove it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. And